Today in Southern Labor History, Ms. Louise Brown recounts her experience as a hospital worker on strike in 1969. I'm one of the 12 that was fired from the Medical University in 1969. I was working at the Medical University, which is now MUSC. And we were working very hard and we love nursing. We wanted to meet with the president because we was being overworked and underpaid. We had to go to work, find somebody to mind our children, get the bus back and forth to work, feed our lunch, and we were not making enough money. Because we were poor women working at the MUSC, they did not respect us, our time that we put in. I and 12 other women were invited uh, to come to Dr. McCoy office. And when we went there, the vice president was sitting there. This is our third trip to his office. We told the vice president we did not want to speak with him, that we wanted to speak with uh, Dr. McCoy, who was the president of the hospital. That's who we wanted to speak with. So he went outside to say he's going to go and get him. So he never came back. When he went out there, we took over his office. Yes, we did. We answered the telephone, but we did not tear the office up. But we were fully in control of the office. The 12 workers were fired for allegedly leaving their patients unattended, although other staff was already assigned to check on the patients. The unjust firing led to 113 days of strikes, protests, and economic boycotts that brought together faith leaders, students, and other low-wage workers in the area as part of the broader labor and civil rights movement. In June of 1969, the Medical College Hospital Administration promised to rehire the strikers the following week, to abide by a newly established six-step grievance process and to provide modest pay increases. The agreement was hailed a victory for 25,000 workers across the state. Following these wins, black elected officials ran in one city, county, and other local offices. The Charleston Hospital Workers' Strike teaches us what it means to stand up for workers' rights as a community and inspire future generations to demand what we deserve.